going to be showing you how I process the photogrammetry data that I received from my Hawaii research. So um, essentially what we did in Hawaii is we took a series of pictures of each coral at three different time points. And so each coral has a bunch of these pictures that were put together and stitched together into a model created in Metashape Pro. Once that model was generated, um, the corals need to can be compared. Oh, I see, hold on. Once that model was generated, <clears throat> I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. Metashape Pro. So let's open one of these products or these projects. So this is the baseline data set. These are all of the models that were taken before the corals were treated. So before they were grown in control conditions. And essentially, um, we have a workplace with all of these different chunks. For each chunk, there's a bunch of cameras associated with it. We can actually look at those down here. Uh, so these are some pictures of corals right here. And what Metashape does is it aligns all of these pictures together, finds dots on the same picture, and is able to track those dots in space. After that, it can create depth maps and point clouds, and then you end up with a model like you see here. This model has different targets associated with it. So let me just zoom into a target here. These are um, things, little, icons that were placed onto the model and uh, Metashape can automatically detect these. Once it has these detected, we actually give it a reference information, so the location of where those targets are in space. And then with that, we now have a referenced model, which is represented by an R, and that means that when I export it somewhere, it's going to maintain its dimensions. And so, um, this can all be done in a batch process. So typically we would do this. We would load the XML file that was going to be doing all of the batches. It's going to align the photos after that, optimize the alignment, build a dense cloud, build the meshes, detect those markers. And then I created a custom script to automatically put the uh, reference location of those markers in and save that information. After that's done, the models are exported onto the computer and are saved in a location here called um, Coral Models. And so we have all of these different Coral Models with different numbers uh, representing the unique identifier of that Coral, and we can then process these. And so to process them, I decided to use Rhino. Uh, mostly because I've worked with this program before, it's really good at what it does and um, can be used in many other applications. There's also like a pretty large user base. I created this folder or project called <clears throat> called 00 template, and this is the template for doing all of the importing and work in Rhino. And you'll see there's different layers here, baseline, mid, and final. And the way I would work this is I would first input the baseline. Then I need to go and figure out what my next model is. So that looks like it's going to be 1111. So I'll go here, click on import, and then I'll find that, that coral. So I'll go 1111, search, and here it is. And the file I'm looking for is this one, the 1110 base. So this is our first coral. You see it gets imported and it fits right onto this alignment tool. And this is just to double check that the coral is actually going to where I was expecting it to be and not being placed somewhere else. So that's where it's imported. Then I'll switch to the mid. And now to make things faster, I can actually type import. And that's kind of a command that's going to tell it to do that. I'll find the mid model, import that. We can turn the baseline off. 
And so now we see that the mid has imported, and there it is. If we want to rotate around this, we can select the coral, click on this view option, and now it's going to be moving with the coral in focus. Um, and this isn't too bad, it seems to be aligning all right. Then I'll go on to the final, write import, one, 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 search that, import the final, open, we can turn off the mid, and so there we see the coral again, um, aligning pretty decently. Now the goal of the work is to actually trim the coral and remove the stuff on the bottom. To do that, I've created a cutting layer, and this cutting layer is just showing you where you're going to be removing the coral, um, other material, other things from the model, like the base plate and so on. And so what I can do to do the trimming is select the coral itself, first decide if that's a good enough height or not. If the height isn't quite right, like you, like I want to get rid of these little pieces there, I can go into the front view and just drag this up using the gumball tracker, and that seems much nicer. We're not cutting off too much of the coral. The area is mostly what the plug is, so we're not going to lose too much information there. And I can click on the default layer and just make sure that it looks OK for these other ones as well. And for the most part, it does. It's not perfect, but we can fix some of those things later. Then what I'll do is I'll select all of these corals, so the three models. I'll click onto the mesh tools. So on here, there's the mesh tools that has many different options. One of them is to do Boolean joints. And I'll choose the Boolean difference, which is saying essentially take these guys and subtract this from it. So I've selected the first set. Now I'll select the second, hit enter, and it's going to do some math and try to more or less trim these corals. It doesn't always work though. There's some cases where the mesh isn't quite right and it fails to do a good job. Oh, and it looks like I made a mistake. So let me just repeat that. And to repeat, you can just right click. Oh, did it again. So repeat, here's the other one. And when it says delete input, I select no. That way, we actually retain the cutting tool if we want to change things later. All right, so it's doing the cutting. It has done the cutting now, so I can actually remove the cutting tool, select these, and zoom on them in all of the layers. And now we can see the different models. Then I'll switch to the top window usually, remove the middle and the final, select the base, and just move it over to the left. Then I'll let the final appear, I'll move it over to the right, and then end it by adding the mid. And this is where we can see differences in the models already. So for this now, we actually want to rotate them so that they're all the same angle. As you can see, this one's pointed down. These other ones are pointed to the left. So we're just going to go here, make sure that we have the ortho on, which is going to limit it to 90 degree chunks, and just simply rotate it. And this works because I have these corals on a square base, meaning that you can only place them in 90 degree increments. And so sometimes what happened was that the corals would be placed, but the orientation wasn't kept the same, and so you'd have different looking corals, different orientations of these corals. Now I can simply clean up the mesh. So I'm going to go here and delete some of these faces using that tool there. So I can delete this face. And then on this side, I'm going to repeat the same. And I can actually show myself what that looks like. And or repeat this command of deleting some of these. And now we've deleted some of those spaces, although that one didn't quite look right. And essentially what I think I'm seeing is that we actually need to move this block a little bit higher. So I'll bring the cutting tool back. I'll go back to showing me all these different windows. 
and I will just move it up slightly. There, that seems good. It seems to have gotten rid of those issues. And we can see that they are more or less the same. So I'll select these three models again. We'll do a Boolean difference. Use this thing as the cutting tool. It's going to remember the settings from before, so it's not going to delete the input. Um, but it will have done the job of actually removing those background information. With that, now we have our models located. For um, sanity's sake, I'll align them to the bottom, hit return, and then I'm going to spread them apart on the x-axis. And now the final step is to actually scale these. So when you export the models from Metashape, the units are in meters, but this program that I'm using is in millimeters. So to convert from millimeters to meters, I have to scale them by a thousand. Um, so essentially the program thinks all the units are in millimeters, but they're actually in meters. And so by multiplying by a thousand, we um, get rid of that. So sorry about that. So uh, let me just repeat this. So we're going to scale them. Just hit enter for automatic. The scale factor is what matters. And we'll type in a thousand for the scale factor. Now we've made these all much bigger. They seem to look good and look fine. You can take a precursory look through them and see if there's any issues. Like here you can see that there's holes. And that's in the baseline, which can happen sometimes. The baseline model isn't as good. And then the other ones um, seem like they have less problems. So you can see coloration on some of them aren't the best. Now I found a technique for dealing with the holes and I'll talk about that in just a second. But first we'll just go through the basics of calculating the volume. To do that just select the model, type in volume, hit enter, and it's giving me the volume in millimeters, cubic millimeters. I'll then put that into the spreadsheet, go to the next coral, repeat the same command with the right click, copy this information, go back to the spreadsheet, paste that, go to the next coral, repeat that, volume command, copy it again, put it back in Excel, and that is basically how you do the volume calculations. Now I'm just going to put in the information as to what coral this came from, convert it into what the identifier actually was because the 1111 this is actually a typo where the first one is recording the genotype of the coral so this is genotype 1 the next two numbers are the ID the unique ID of that genotype so this is sample 11 and then the final one is just the genotype again I can drag this down and it'll actually say what the treatment is so this is atrazine and estrone treatment and I can copy this down as well. So this is when these different photos were taken for the model. And if there's any issues, like for example here, I can type that out and say model has holes. And we can actually fix that pretty simply. So now I'm just going to save this as a different model. So save as, I'm going to call it the same name that it is. And with that, we've successfully saved this command. Now to fix the issue with the holes, there's a fairly simple way to do that in Rhino. And so what I'll do is go into the Rhino folder where the corals are here. And I'm going to open this with the Rhino WIP, which means work in progress because they have a very simple command there called, um, well, you'll see, but I think it's called shrink mesh or something like that. Shrink wrap. So it's just going to open now. We see all of our corals here. We see the problematic coral. So why don't we just zoom in on that? And it's got those holes that you can see. So one way to deal with this potentially is to simply enlarge it. So you can click on that, write shrink wrap. The command shows up. It says target edge length. I don't know exactly what that means, 
but what we want to do is offset it. So I'll offset it by three millimeters and have it filling the holes. It's not going to delete the input object, so the original object is still going to be there. So I've gone ahead and inflated it, as you can see there. And now I'm just going to repeat that command, and this time I'm going to shrink it. And with it shrunk, and I'll in delete the input object, we'll see that we have a different coral now with a different volume, but the holes are all gone. And so what I want to do is repeat this command on all of the other corals. So I'm just going to undo this, select these three, and I'm just going to apply the same command to all of them. Target edge length, whatever. We're going to do an offset of three. It's going to inflate them all. And then we're going to repeat that command, and this time do a negative three. Press OK, and there's those corals. So now I'm just going to move them out of the way so that we can actually click on them individually. Delete these so we can see the originals. And as you can see, <laughs> they're not quite the same anymore. They definitely did not, it's definitely fixed the whole issue, but it's not quite right. So. Why don't we try a different volume and increase it maybe by one and a half. Press OK. Repeat the command, but this time I'm going to delete the input. We're going to go back one and a half. Move these out of the way seems to be a bit better. The holes are definitely gone. And so with that, I think we're pretty much good. I've got these three, they're actually joined because you did them to get we did them together. So I'm going to press this explode, which separates them out. Um, changing these layers won't do anything other than tell you what the coral came from. So this is the baseline. I'll just type in volume. Now I have a new volume recorded here. So I'll copy that paste it. I'm going to do it again to this one. Copy that. Paste it. I'll do it again here. Copy the value. And then paste it. And um, I've actually got the wrong row, so it needs to go here. Added 1.5 millimeters, then subtracted from all of them. And so this is an option for comparing the different volumes. And what I can tell right away is that it's definitely changed the difference between these two. In the first two, you could see that the difference is almost a thousand, actually more than a thousand, probably because of the holes. Once those holes were filled in, the difference is seems to be less than that. And because we have Excel, we can actually calculate this. So this minus this, and you can see that's 190. And here it's this minus this versus 1,600, so that's definitely seemed to calm down the difference in volumes here. And more or less corrected the issue fairly quickly. While I think maintaining the difference between the next two. So here we see it's negative through 936, and here it's roughly negative 900, so it's fairly similar, fairly comparable. And that's the idea of how we do that. So now with that done, I'll leave these all there. I'm going to press save, control save. It's going to save it as a new format. No, I don't want to. So I'll put an underscore shrink wrapped. Press save. 
and that's the basics of how that's done. The pivot table can then be updated to put the new data, and we can see we just added 1111. One, one, one.